Let me start out with a date. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Today is the first month, the 14th day of year 2024, and it's the second Lord's Day after Epiphany, and it's a feast day, St. Hilary Porteres and St. Uh, Philip's of Nola. Yeah. Stay ahead of, you know, we didn't even. And, and we Michigan's, Michigan's off was better. Yeah. But <coughs> Penix panicked because he's good. Yeah. You wouldn't know it if you watched that game. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't. If you watched the game, you wouldn't know it. Oh, exactly. You twice. would think he was like McCarthy the week before. Uh, so uh, on any given day. Well, you, yeah, you know what? I, I got two things to say, <laughs> and that's all I got to say. And that is one play away, each of those teams couldn't have been there. Could have been Alabama and Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. One that, play. That's how good those teams are. That's right. When you're on the top. And I was thinking of this all week. The NFL. They never are undefeated all the way, didn't they? You know, they, they, oh, no, they, no, they, yeah. They always yeah. have two, three, four yeah. losses or something like that. What did they, what, what is the, did they come out with their rankings yeah. like? Alabama should really be second maybe now because <laughs> Michigan beat Alabama, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but Michigan really beat Washington worse. Yeah. So shouldn't Alabama be number, they might be if you check the college yeah, football I didn't, rankings. I didn't I looked at the rankings, they, they don't look like they're right to me. That was right after. You can check it online, anybody. Check, right, yes, they'll tell you what the rankings are. ESPN, they give you the AP 25 poll, and they give you the coaches poll. Uh, the playoff poll. They'll give you both. I'm going to take those off in a while, but I want to wear it. And honor St. Nikolai's dream she had the other day. We have a, we're celebrating another pe person this week in the United States who had a dream. I had a dream. Yeah. Guess who that is? Martin Luther. Martin Lucifer King Boulevard. You know, yeah. it was Martin Lucifer King. I had a dream. I went up on a mountain and I saw the Lord. That guy is idolized by everybody. You talk against him, you're an anthema. He's another one you can't talk against. That communistic, black, radical, heretical piece of shit that he is. That's right. You heard me right. Uh, also, uh, let's see. Now, today's the day we would have been taking down our uh, Christmas stuff, but it's the Lord's Day. So tomorrow we take down our Christmas stuff. Usually on the after the octave day of Epiphany, that's when it's over. So for anybody who has Christmas stuff up, uh, you would have been taking it down on the 14th, which is today, but it's the Lord's Day. So take it down tomorrow, the Christmas stuff. Yeah, he's recording. That's why I said that. Who, uh, who's on? I told you right. Josh is going to might. He's going to try to get on. He doesn't know if he can make it, but he's going to try to get by. He's working. So I told him he's going to ask his bosses if he can get off on the Lord's Day. But I said if you could, you could. If you can't, we're living in a pagan world. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to have to uh, submit to the pagan yoke. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't ask him. It would be interesting to find out. Yeah. Uh, but, and Augustine's going to be 20 minutes late, and I think he, I, is, is, he might be there now. Oh. Yeah, he's there. He's there now. He is. Yeah, he's there. Oh, before he gets off, Augustine's on there now, but before, who knows what happens now. Sometimes he's on, he's off, he's off, he's on. Uh, but let me give him a blessing right now because it's his birthday. He's 21 years old. Now, according to most state stuff, he's legal now. Yeah. No, illegal. Nobody can. He can drink alcohol now. But as a Muslim, when he was a Muslim, his parents were they don't drink at all. What a bunch of hypocrites! You know, I was thinking of something in alcohol that gets pretty deep, and I'm going to write about it. I'm going to talk about it now, so maybe I'll post it. But let me take this off so I don't think I'm wearing my hat in the church. But anyway. I guess said, nice outfit, Brother Richard. Good. Uh, remind me to talk about alcohol in a minute, but I want to give him a blessing now, so I don't forget. Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. We God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the God the Son, Jesus Christ, bless and protect you, Brother Augustine. We thank God for creating and redeeming you, for cooperating with those graces. We pray you will continue to do so in order to enter the Catholic Church, in order to save your soul for, and give glory to God and help to save the souls of others. And we pray that uh, you will be free from the yoke of your Muslim's parents as soon as possible. Now, this is how God always works something upon your mind, right? And the reason I got this was whenever you, like, what you're trying to do in the world today, they don't like alcohol and smoking. So they don't like cigarettes and cigars, and they don't like alcohol. So they're always trying to tell you, don't drink, don't drink. How many drinks do you drink a day? How many drinks do you drink a week? Don't drink. Don't. Now, if you're an alcoholic, that's another question. You're bad. 
Because then you're drinking all day. Well, I'm not talking about that. So we know that they're putting down alcohol. And I, the reason I said it, because you look at it, oh, when you when you have like the flu or something like this, yes. when I drink the alcohol at night, it loosens up the phlegm and it's the medicine. Actually, it's medicine. So I thought about this. This is sneaky, right? My thing is, God gave us alcohol. It's in the Bible. That's what he gave us to drink. That's our medicine. That's our relaxation thing. That's the thing that we use to relax, to get warm and cozy. God gave that to us. God Almighty gave it to us. You're telling me now that that stinks, but I got to go, go out and take your psycho pills? Yeah. <laughs> take the psycho pills, but don't drink the alcohol. Take the psycho pills, but don't drink the alcohol. Take the psycho pills so your mind is going, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. and did you ever read the label on the psycho pills, what it can do to you? Now, here's my point. They'll tell you, oh, you know, alcohol can do this. It can raise your blood pressure. It can do that. They tell you, a, a, a few little things alcohol can do. Well, take a look at those pills they give you when you're a, 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 a psycho pills yeah. for bipolars, depressive manics, yeah. manic depressives, depressive manics. Read what it can do. Yeah. Yeah. It can poison your liver. It can confound your mind. It yeah. can cause you to commit suicide and give thoughts of suicide. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. You can take that. As a matter of fact, you uh, you take that. You know, and when you're taking that, don't drink alcohol now. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that can help you if you do it moderately, it's alcohol. This was God gave us. So now they're, they're pushing this bullshit that has about 20,000 different side effects that can knock you off your feet. And that's okay. Take it every day. But don't drink alcohol. See how the devil is? Sneaky bastard. Because anybody who drinks alcohol the right way knows that this is what God has given us. I mean, we know... If you're a Southern Baptist, you wouldn't know that. You would think it was grape juice. Yeah. What? Is it crazy? Are we living in a nut house? Yeah. Really? The Muslims, too. What? They, they believe in the Old Testament, so they say. Yeah. So, what? Were they, you, I mean, wine is throughout the whole Old Testament. Yeah. Well, every time wine is mentioned, it's always grape juice. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? No, no. Are you a lying bastard? Yeah, but you see what, the guy, what they're doing to you is, and you get these people walking around on a cycle post and they're like zombies. You see, they're zombies. It makes them more crazy, or it's like a lobotomy. You know, it's sort of like numbs them. Sort of like, oh, he's not. He's not running around. He's not banging walls. He's just like. Hey, Rich, how you doing? <laughs> you know, right? But don't touch the alcohol. How did they keep grape juice from going bad? They would have had to make all their grape juice and take it off in two days. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> it would naturally ferment. Yeah, it would go bad. It, that, it would be natural be fermentation. Yeah. Now, I, I might post this because, I mean, I, I was thinking about this, uh, and, and I never thought of it from this perspective. But uh, because of, when you're studying, you got the flu, I'm doing, I want, what can I do for this and that? Medicines, you're taking that. And it's always the alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol and smoking. Verboten. Yeah. You got people that smoke moderately and drink moderately and they're like 100, 120 years old. You know? And so you're trying to tell me that this stuff. So, so and I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, then God is the author of this sinful alcohol that he's given us and promoted us to drink. And so my point is the very thing that he gave us to ease you, to make you relax, comfortable is alcohol. Not LS, no, LSD, that's something crazy. <laughs> not Valiums, not the antidepressants, not uh, bipolar medicine, not marijuana, which messes your head up, by the way. No, I'm not against Valiums, and they do have certain things when people are in an extremely anxious state. You've got to give them a Valium. Uh, to, I'm not against, that's a lead, you can use that medicine, it's fine. But you use it only for that moment when the person is in a highly excitable state, and panic and stuff, then you can use it, but not as a regular basis. So there's certain medicines, I'm not condemning all medicines, but the thing is just kind of weird, you know, when you're, when you're reading about, oh, take this bipolar medicine, take this antidepressant medicine, but alcohol is bad, and then you read the label on the antidepressant medicine, it could knock out your liver, it could ruin your lungs, it can give you pneumonia, you can get suicidal thoughts, it may give you a heart attack, but take it every day. Because I'm the doctor. Take it every day. But not the alcohol. 
So, and then when the person who's an alcoholic, he's told that it's a like genetic, and he can never drink again, the very thing that if he moderates his alcohol and he learns how to drink properly, the very thing that can help him would be the alcohol. So what they do with a lot of these alcoholics that are not drinking booze, they put them on pills. Now the guy's messed up on his psycho pills. And it messes him up more than if he knew how to moderate his alcohol. What's the big deal? We have people in here that have been, were alcoholics. And they learned how to drink moderately. We all drink moderately here. And it's beautiful. And and when you, I was even drinking a lot to get drunk. I got drunk a lot when I was a kid, younger. And now I look back at it, and when I drink moderately, pleasantly now, I can't even imagine it. It's a horrible feeling when you're drunk. Yeah. It's not good. You're just into orientated. You don't, you're off your balance. You, you, you can't think straight. It's like things are spinning. Then you get sick the next day. You're throwing up and your guts are coming out. And then you go, I'm never going to drink again. And then you drink three more days. You're doing it again. So that, that's drunkardness, right? But that's a whole other thing, you see. And it's just like if you overeat. Food is good. You eat too much. You become morally simple glutton. So <laughs> alcohol used properly is a very good thing. And that's why we condemn Stoics, man. I'm going to tell you, I don't want... We have other people in here that they never listen to me. You know, I tell you, a stoic too is prideful and scrupulous. He doesn't. He's a he's a rebel, rebellious. He does not listen to anybody he tells him. He wants to be. He's, he's always worried, and they they don't obey. So I trying to explain. Have, have, drink some alcohol. Ah, I'm not going to drink alcohol. So we're all hurt drinking, and they're drinking their grape juice or their soda. Look at me. You got those guys are drinking beers. You know the Diamond Brothers were like that. What hypocrites! They would not outwardly condemn alcohol, but they did say, well. Considering that there's so many alcoholics in the world today, it's not good to drink. Oh, oh, so we have a lot of gluttons. Yeah. So should we stop eating food? <laughs> you stupid jerk. That's what he would say. But he was a hypocrite because Brother Joseph used to keep some alcohol there when people visited to give it to him. Uh -huh. But they're stoic. He, so, uh, oh, it's okay to drink alcohol. So when someone would come over and they would ask for a beer or something, they would stare at him. You know what I mean? It would be like... You want what? Uh, can I have like a Ryan Ginger or a wine or a beer? Oh, all right, here. All right. I know other people that are like this too. Yeah, down in Texas. That was a nut. What a nut. So, I mean, oh, okay. So then you've got those other people that pay lip service to alcohol is okay, but it's really not okay. And so those are the kind of people I'm going to sit down and put a pipe down the throat and throw some alcohol down there. No, I'm not going to get them drunk, but just, you know, a normal eight ounce. I, I, I do two eight ounces of wine every night or three beers. Here's the first beer. Look. And he's like this. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's a Jew eats the pork, too. No, yeah, yeah. We'll get rid of your scruples. So he gets one beer and he goes, hey, that's not bad. Uh, see, you're not drunk. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. I feel guilty now. Wait, no, I, I wasn't supposed to drink. I, 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 I don't feel. Shut up. No. Next beer. Okay, fine. Two, maybe three, whatever. You, but slowly, you know. See, if you're drinking too, you got you. You, it's, you pace yourself. When we used to drink to get drunk, it was just like oh, bombs man. away, man. <laughs> bombs away. You know, when you sip, if like for instance, if I drink those sixteen or. Uh, I ate six, 12 ounces or, or 16 ounces of wine real, or, in one beat, then I'm going to go like a little bit, you know, yeah. I'm going to go. Now, sometimes if, if you're drinking stuff strong like uh, Jonah did and it was new wine and he got drunk, it wasn't his fault. He didn't know it. But you sip it to your, and then you see you get that nice, warm, cozy feeling, very nice, and, and then you know how to moderate it. You, know? you, know, you said Jonah, I think. Jonah, did I say Jonah? I meant Noah. Noah, Noah. Noah, Noah, Noah. Yeah, you're right. Noah. Sorry, Jonah. He had his own problems. <laughs> Before he jumped over the boat. <laughs> he threw him off the boat. I admire your honesty, Jonah. You see, we know that stuff. It's like when you're watching The Chosen. Yeah, yeah. You see, you wouldn't have known that if you didn't read the Bible. You read the Bible, Will. He reads the Bible. But... Uh, it, it, it's it, the devil has cornered off, and like somebody's talking about tomatoes are no good for you last week. What is this bullshit? I mean, uh, cow meat is. Not, I mean, anything God has allowed us to eat is good. Okay. Now you may be allergic to a food like shrimp 
or you can't eat beef or pork because you get hives. Fine, that's. Yeah. But what the devil has done, and he's doing it really bad now. He's got all these modified foods, these things that he's making up, and he's condemning. Like, oh, real butter's no good now. You've got to have the margarine, which is fake butter. That's fake shit, you know? I mean, you know, and you, you eat that margarine crap? Get it out of here. It's heretical. I call it heresy. That's heretical. Mar that's, that's, like, that's like Hellenism of Christianity is margarine compared to real butter. So, sometimes you you, you got to eat stuff. But the devil is forcing you into an unhealthy lifestyle by trying to tell you it's healthy. And what's healthy is unhealthy. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. He's leading you down the path of unhealthiness. <laughs> and alcohol and smoking is one of the biggest things. You smoke in moderation. It doesn't bother you. If you don't, you can ruin your health and then you got to stop. And then if you can come back and do it again, you better moderate it so it doesn't ruin your health. So you don't want to ruin your health. But <laughs> these are things they're always pumping on. Always pumping on. You know? Yeah. Uh, when you go up... Oh, how many drinks do you drink a day? How many do you drink a week? Yeah. If you drink more, if you drink one drink a day, you're an alcoholic. Oh, what does that mean? I'm an alcoholic. Does that mean like if I, I stop drinking, I'm going to go into the DTs? <laughs> well, during Lent, or five, seven, ten, twelve. When I had the flu, no DTs. I just don't drink alcohol. If an alcoholic gets DTs because what happens when you drink all the time? Your body gets so used to alcohol in you that when it's not in there, you start going. Your body goes nuts. And it's bad. It's a horrible feeling. But if you drink regular, moderately, you can stop drinking and nothing's going to happen. Yeah. You just stop. You might miss. You say, oh, I wish I had some wine tonight, but you're not going. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I'm no wine tonight. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sweating. No, it's kind of stuff. No. So you can be without it. Drinking every day. Like I do every night. Every night. And I watch my movie and I relax. That's what God has given us. But that's... Uh, that's, that's, it was, it's like really, I, I got really angry because I forget what I was looking at, but it was something to do with the flu I got and medicine you take and they're always telling you, well, you can have one or two drinks or you, uh, no drink. We don't really recommend it. <laughs> you know, if you're getting old and you have some arthritic joints, we don't recommend alcohol. Yeah. Okay, no alcohol. It's always there. Yeah. It's always there. And even the smoking, too. And when you go into these things, I do drink. Uh, uh, no of your business. I ain't going to tell you. Yeah. You know? Do you smoke? Only when I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, what's going on with that? Hey, no, you, uh, oh! Richard, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're drinking, you, which you, 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 can, you should stop. It's not good for you. And by the way, we're going to prescribe to you this bipolar medicine and this depression medicine. You've got to take three a day. Every day, and now it's going to make you depressed maybe a little bit or suicidal thoughts. So you, you, you can, it's going to do this. Oh, wait a second, Doc. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's okay, but alcohol is bad? But they give you other pills to take so you don't get depressed. Yeah, you did. You, yeah, they'll give you one pill. Hey, Doc, I took this pill so that, like, uh, I don't get these suicidal thoughts, but now I'm a little depressed, though. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to give you an upper. I'm going to give you this pill that moves you goes up. Yeah. I'm up a little too high So with that pill. So we'll give you another one that moderates it, you know. So the whole thing's crazy. Yeah. You see? Uh, you know, they're condemning all kinds of meat now. Yeah. If you're too obsessed with... If you're too obsessed with... The only legitimate discussion is these modern foods with preservatives yeah, and, and, um, GMO. and GMO. That stuff, that's, 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 that's bad stuff. I agree. Yeah. But when you start condemning natural foods that God has given us, and that, you know, oh, meat is no good, this is no good, that's no good, you know, watch out. Eggs are bad for you. Mm -hmm. Eggs are bad for you, this is bad for you, that's bad for you. Life's bad for you. Ryan made a very profound statement there. He said, life is bad for you. And that goes back to what I used to say, right? I used to say, I, the minute you're born, you're dying. Yeah, exactly. The minute you're born, you're dying. Matter of fact, I always told you so. Maybe you guys, you guys remember it though. I went to school one day, and I told everybody my mother's dying, and, and it went around school like a wildfire. And they're all coming up to me. Our brandy's mother's dying. Our brandy's mother's dying. So the the teachers and all, they all came. Oh, what's wrong, Rich? What's wrong with your mother? 
Well, nothing particular, but we're all dying. <laughs> they yell at the nuns. Oh what? Yeah. You, you got the whole school in uproar. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing been particular. I got, a, I got this nice Irish sweater under here, which, yeah. I got, which is too hot now, yeah. you see. This is the one from Ireland. Nice. Right? This thing is one of the best sweaters I... I, I I, for the Irish people, you get a lot of credit for this sweater. Yeah. Yeah, I wore a lot of sweaters, but yeah. this thing holds in a lot of heat, extra heat, yeah. but it's a little too hot right now. One good thing about a beard is you don't need to shave. Yeah. Yep. And when you make your hair like this, you don't need to comb your hair. Can be wearing a hat and everything. That's why when he gets too long, you got to get it cut. But so that's it, it, interesting, isn't it? How you look at the devil around every corner. Basically, he's taking what's good and telling you it's evil, and what's evil or unhealthy, he's telling you is healthy. He flips everything. I mean, you got these people in Russia and other areas. They live to 120 years old. They drink their vodka, smoke a little bit at night. They they don't they eat regular food like normal. Farm food, they don't go to like, and they live like 120 years old. That's it. Unbelievable. But the worst thing to me is, you're condemning God's, what God had told us is good, okay? So if God told us it's good, I'm, that's it for me. I don't care about Dr. Vinny Bumbats. He can't tell me nothing. I don't want to hear from Dr. Fauci about alcohol, all right? I smack you upside your head, you bastard. He probably goes in the back room and is a drunk. <laughs> Or he shoots up heroin or whatever he does, man. I mean, but even medicines, there are medicines that, uh, like uh, painkillers, you need them. Even the real strong ones, if you're really in pain, you do need them. I'm not against that. I'm not, because that's a physical pain or if you're excited. So I'm talking about the psycho pills they're giving people. It's, they substitute it. And it basically, too, the biggest thing the devil attacks is if you're too godly. If you're too religious, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, on the natural law, even you don't even have to be a Catholic, but if you like keeping the natural law, you got some type of, even though it's a false religion, maybe he still doesn't like that even, but he hates the true religion the most. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want you to pray. He wants you to make think prayer is stupid. It's meaningless. It doesn't help. It doesn't do anything. The faith, you don't need the faith. You can be saved. The worst thing is you can be saved by just believing in Jesus. Yeah. The Protestant Martin Luther thing and the Vatican II thing now. So universal salvation. I don't got to pray. I don't got to do anything. The very things that we do that keep us completely healthy and soul first of all, and even our bodies when God sees fit, is the three pillars of prayer, penance, study, yeah. the Catholic faith. So He took that away. He took that away a long time ago in the Renaissance Church. With a lot of, it started getting worse and worse with the laymen. Until after World War II, almost there was no laymen left that were even faithful. After Vatican II, it really yeah. fell off the cliff. Yeah. <clears throat> so they goof on you. Oh, you're reading the Bible. <laughs> Look, I'm ready to He's a goofball. He's a Jesus freak, right? That's like the guy finally picks up the one thing that can cure him. The one pill, let's say, that this is the pill that can cure me, the pearl of great price. And they laugh at him. They goof on him so he doesn't take it. You're goofing. This is the very thing that's going to help me. The Bible, the Word of God, prayer, and they goof on you. So they make you feel like, fine, I'll put that aside. Hey, that's goofy. They're going to goof on you. You're not going to be successful in the world. They're going to laugh at you. You're not going to get a job. Like my father, you talk too much about Jesus. Yeah. My father said, they talk too, too, much about, too much about Jesus. <laughs> when I was a pagan, I never talked about Jesus. I used very bad words. I was a, living like a monster. I, that was okay. Now I'm a nut. Now I'm talking about Jesus. I'm living a pure, chaste, nice, holy life, and I'm uh, and I'm, I'm going to lock me up. That's basically they did say that. They said they're going to send the white coats out. After they did, you know. I said, send them out. Send out the white coats and lock me up because I ain't never going to stop talking about Jesus Christ. And here I am today, no white coats yet, but it might happen. But I called my father on the phone. I said, Dad, do you? I said, you believe in Jesus? You? And how come you never talk about him? How come you never use his name? How come you never read the Bible, you piece of shit? He's in hell right now, burning forever. Yeah. And I can't wait to smack the shit out of him on the general judgment day. I can't stand my... I, I, he's dead now. Presumed to be in hell with my mother. 
And believe when I say presume, strong presumption. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woe to you if you put your parents above God or anybody. <laughs> you know, even pagan parents maybe that were probably better to, that lived by the natural law were probably better than my parents. I think that one of the biggest things the devil grabbed everybody into is psychiatry and psychiatrists. That's the big thing. They go there now. That's your, your self-help gurus that are on TV and all your pills and your psycho guys. I tell you, if you want to get right with God, get away from these bastards. If you're taking psycho pills, you're never going to get better. You're going to get worse and you're going to stay the way you are, bad, never get better, and you're going to end up in hell when you die. That's it. You stop taking those pills, start praying, and go to God, and you're going to be happier, more peaceful than you can even dream of. Our Lord says, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Not as the world give it to I give unto you. That's uh, 14, John 14 something, or Luke 14. But... Uh, he gives you a peace and a rock-solid confidence that nothing can give you. And you're depriving yourself of that by listening to the stupid psychiatrist, by taking the stupid pills he writes for you, the Jewish and Freemasonic doctors and all the other stupid shits that went to these schools, you know, and you go in front of this guy, he don't know who, he, doesn't, he can't touch your soul. He didn't create your soul. He can't give grace in your soul. And you sit down, and he sits down, and will lay down on the couch and tell me what happened when you were like five years old, you know, or, or two, three years when they potty trained you. Did they potty train you the right way? Oh, okay. Uh, did you have an Oedipus complex with your mother, your father, Sigmund Freud shit, you know? And this Jewish psychiatrist, this Freemasonic freak, is analyzing you. And you're submitting to the guy. Imagine a Catholic doing that. Who says, I believe in a Catholic God. God gives me everything spiritually that I need. And you're listening to this freak? Yeah. I never I never went for it. I, they tried to get me to go, go and I went, I'm never going to go to I said, he's a stranger. I don't know that guy. He doesn't know me. He knows nothing about me or my soul. This is even when I was a pagan. I would never go. I'm going to say to him. And the street kids don't go for that. I'll smack the shit out of this guy. Yeah. I, I, what, what do, you know, I don't know you. Yeah. You don't know me. What are you going to do for me? Yeah. It's the utopian confessional. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the utopian confessional. Yeah. It's your modern day confession. Yeah. <clears throat> and you never get better. You just get worse or he gets drugs yeah. to cover it up. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, then when you're getting off the couch, he takes out his pad. Yeah. Well, I'm going to prescribe a couple pills for you. <laughs> Take these pills three times a day. And he knows they ain't going to make you better. Come just make you worse in another way. And come back to me uh, next month and we'll yeah. continue this till the day you die. Yeah. And then you're going to end up in hell. They do the same thing with kids in school. They don't oh. them and then they give them drugs. Everything in school now is it's a psychological thing. They ask you all psychological questions. How's your mental health? Do you, are you a boy? You think you're a girl? What, I, I went to a site the other day. I forget what it was. Was it MVD or something? And they said, are you a male? Or are you a female that declares yourself to be a male? And you got to answer all these questions yeah. now. What is that guy? This yeah, is crazy. I, I got an email from one of my guys. It's called Young Farmers of America. They're offering a $5,000 grant. So I applied for it. But then in their, one of their questions is about, do you, have you experienced discrimination with you know, trans folks? So I, I, I gave them a whole diatribe, and I gave them the Yeah, yeah, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> diatribe. Hey, Brian used the big word. He's hanging around with us too much. Yeah. Diatribe. <laughs> yeah, good. You've witnessed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but... Uh, this is good, so I did the alcohol lecture. I didn't know what I was going to do today, but I thought about it today, this morning or maybe last night. I think it was this morning or, or last night because I was looking at medical stuff about the flu and about pills you take and arthrit arthritis and all that. And every everywhere you read, I don't care anything you're reading on medical. Uh, someone said, well, you could have maybe one drink a day, once in a while, but you really shouldn't. <laughs> You really shouldn't. Yeah, here's, the thought, here's the thing I got, too. When you listen to them, then you do get sick. Yeah. You would have never got sick if you didn't listen to the bastards. The devil is, look, the devil has the power to make you sick, to kill you, or to heal you. Even The devil can do all it is. He could. Mm -hmm. He's in our physical bodies even now. That's the concupiscence of our flesh. We got devils we carry around in our body as part of the concupiscence of the flesh. And they can kill you. They can break your arm. They can make you sick. Or they can even heal you if they want. But my point is, a lot of times when they're telling you this stuff and you start to believe this stuff, you start to get sick yourself. Or if you go to them to get cured, you get worse. 
So you're going to all these doctors that are telling you how you can cure your thing, and you're not putting your... See, there's a point where you can go to doctors to get cured of a physical ailment, but when you find out it's not working, stop. Right. It's a hoax. That maybe it's not the doctor's fault. He was taught wrong in school. He's following what he was told. You're going to some self-help guru. Some guy's telling you to take this and take that. If it's not working, stop. Like, like the woman with the blood. Yeah, yeah right. 12 years. No doctor can help her. Who helped her? At that point, accept your illness and pray to God to cure you. If you don't do that, you're never going to get better. And you will get worse because you're not going to God. You're not going to God. And when God sees that you're not going to Him after you try, and you're still going back to these quacks, you're going to get worse. Now, sometimes it's God's lot for you to suffer. We all get, you get moments where you're really healthy, and then all of a sudden you get sick again. It happens. And some people get sick a lot. Accept it, offer it up to the cross, and know you're getting a lot of grace for it. But don't keep trying to go to people you know have proven themselves to be, it's not working, okay? Because I've never seen more self-help stuff on the internet now. Uh, some guy said, uh, this is crazy. What was it the other day? It was weird. Absolutely weird. They'll say something like, eat grapefruits and you're going to be, your arthritis is going to be gone. The other guy, it was something really stupid. He said, you know, uh, you know eat this and you're going to be good. Like, they get all these self-help. Oh, it was really, I'm trying to think. It was really funny, too. It's absolutely beyond funny. Something so unbelievable. And but and they can make up a whole thing and present the whole thing. You you listen to the guy and you go, hey, if I take this, I'm going to get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, hey, try this with your tinnitus. You take this and you tap the spoon over here ten times. Yeah, yeah. And you the tinnitus yeah, commercial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tap it ten times and you're going to be cured. No, I'm going to die. I'll cure you from your prostrate. No, you do this, you do that. And then you've done all these things and it don't work. And the guy got your money. <clears throat> So you, you, you do what you got to do according to normal medicine, but if it's not working and, and, and it's, you're not getting it, stop it. Stop it and offer up your suffering to God and go to God to heal you once you found that. Because there's so, a lot of quacks out there. And some people spend their whole life just reading about doctor's reports and, 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 and health nut stuff. You, got, you know how many health nuts you got out there? You go over to their house and you'll find more stuff on their health than on the Catholic faith. They're not, instead of reading the Catholic faith, you're reading, Dr. Uh, Epstein said that if you do this and you do that, and he's got a cream for this and a cream for that, a God for this and a God for that, a God to sleep and a God to awake. Oh, and we got this new study over here that if you take this coenzyme without this enzyme over here, and, okay? Now, the things that are really bad, I, they are, you, I'm not against all investigating, because there are stuff that's bad. You know, the pre preservatives and certain things are bad to eat. It's true. But there's a lot of people that go overboard with it. And my point, when they start condemning things that God has allowed, watch out and be careful. They, they, people like that have to have a special diet. They can't eat normal food. If they visit normal people, they they, they got to bring their own bag with lunch in it or their own food. Now, sometimes you got to do that if you have an allergy to your foods. And because you're born that way, you got like, you can, you can die. But the health freak nut people... They were a burden to where would he go? Oh, I can't eat that. No, I, no, no, no. Okay, what about... No, I, I can't eat that neither. I can't eat that neither. Okay, well, I, I, what can you eat? I, I'll make a separate thing for you. and every, Everybody else gets this little poor puppy. You can have this. Or oh, i got to come along with that. And, and, and a lot of times, they don't even really have proof that these things are harming them. It's, it's what these doctors are telling them. Now, I'm not against... Some people definitely are allergic to food. So you, some people can die from eating shrimp. So if somebody says, I can't eat the shrimp, I'm going to die. Or shellfish, you know. So I'm not against that. But <laughs> beware of the health nut people. <clears throat> Man, I mean, they probably got, you know, you don't like, like the SUMA? They got SUMAs of papers on health. You know what? I don't got one paper on health. Not one. I got, I got a lot of stuff on God and the faith. Got some stuff on politics too, because we gotta we gotta hit the politics. But uh, you gotta be careful. Is all I'm saying. Uh, and then God curses you. And then instead of getting, let's say God wants you to suffer at, at this stage, but you're doing that, He's going to make you suffering worse now. Now you're going to suffer worse, and then you're going to complain, and you might start getting mentally messed up, and even start losing the faith. Got to be careful with all of that. Can you imagine that you get some? No, I can't eat that. No, I can't. What, 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 what could you eat? 
tell me, what can you eat? You know, and, uh, I can just eat like uh, lettuce that, that uh, and, and I can't put anything on it. Lettuce, give, give, give him some lettuce. And guess what? we got grass out in the backyard. <laughs> Is grass okay? You want to eat the grass? Mm. All you pagan people, you're eating all these, this flesh. And I agree too. Like you got to moderate your food, though. I'm not against that. Like dessert, if sugar's too much will mess you up. I agree. You take too much sugar, you're bouncing off the wall. So you got to moderate your desserts. But you're still good. Chocolate's good. Desserts are good. Moderate them. If you go too much with it, you are going to get messed up. So if there's a balance, even on good food, you can abuse good food. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I think it um. It all ties into um, trying to escape death, you know, living for so long. That's it. All it all ties into that utopia. You know what I mean? It's kind of like mocking God and, and, and trying to, you know, live forever. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep, Sal. It's utopia. It's utopia. He's right. It is mocking God. It absolutely is. It's the fountain of youth. It's utopia. It's I'm going to live forever. It's I'm going to. You're going to die anyway. No matter what you do. You know, I, I, I was really happy when that one running guy, he was a health nut, nut and he ran. Jack, Jack no, he, him too, but he died eventually. But this guy died when he was 40. And he was a real health nut. He ran all the time. He's a famous guy, a runner. And he was a big health nut. And, he, and I had a heart attack when he was 40, and I celebrated. Yeah. That's so much for this. Yeah. You're going to die anyway. Yeah. But it is. So that's exactly what I'm saying. You're, 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 you're yeah. arguing with God. <laughs> you're trying to give yourself life everlasting without God. You're trying to give yourself a body that stays young forever. That's why all these Hollywood people, they get the facelifts. They, they, they put the Botox in there. They, they sew up their jowls. They, they, they take this adrenochrome from dead babies and the devil makes them look younger for 10 more years. And they're still, they still look ugly anyway, by the way, okay? <laughs> To me, when you start getting like that, you get plasticky looking. It's really weird. And you're going to die anyway. So when you're worrying too much about this stuff, and like our Lord said, it's not what goes into the body, which go, you know, that perverts, that it's, it's, what, it's what's in a man's heart. But like Sal said, it comes from an atheistical, agnostical, ideological, theological position of there's no God and we're, we're here to make utopia. And we can make ourselves live longer. Live longer, right? What's the average lifespan of man today? 90, 80? What was it before the flood? A thousand years! <laughs> Methuselah was 950 years old. I think was, I, I think I so what? How was that? They didn't have no modern medicines. All they had was natural stuff. Go ahead. Well, I thought I, thought I heard 70 or something like that recently. Yeah. And so I thought, I'm going to die this year. Well, what you do? We got a great for you over there. Don't worry about it. Now I'm afraid of dying. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna die. I wasn't last year, but yeah, this year I am. You're gonna, yeah, you're going to die. So how, how is it that before the flood, they lived to like a thousand years, even after that 600, 700, 500 years, no modern medicines, all just by far, it's God who goes in there. And it's not even the natural stuff. He gets. That's just for you to enjoy. God flips the switch and wants you to live. Or he flips the switch and wants you to die. And I think people are even dying sooner now because of all this junk they're being given. Look, they'll go back and always say this. This is the deception of the devil. Well, yeah, but you go back to Middle Eight, uh, Renaissance times, and people, the lifespan was 30. Yeah. Or You know why, though? Because of the plagues. Exactly. Yeah. Not because of the medicine. Because yeah. God was cursing the whole world because of the Renaissance movement. And you look at the Black Plague in Europe, it wiped out three quarters of Europe. Yeah. All the Dominicans. All the princes, they were all wiped out. <laughs> but that's why it was low. Not because of the food, not because of the lifestyle. It was because of the plagues. Yeah. They tried to say the same thing about uh, World War One yeah. era in the 1800s. Yes. Know, they said you have big wars. Wars. And, you know, exactly. Yeah. And, and people are dying young. Yeah. They, see, here's the trick of the devil, yeah, right? Yeah. So you go back and you go, well, back in those days, Renaissance days, World War One even, uh, look, 30 years old, uh, 30, 33 is the average death rate, you know. And now we double that. We're up to 70, 80. We're doing, because there's no major war in the United States since the, after World War II. There's no plagues. God's allowing this world to, to, to have a false confidence, too. That's why God would slam people down like that. But So they're lying to you. It's God who determines how long you're going to live. 
It's not that. Uh, uh, I am the Lord God. I kill and make to live. I strike and I heal. There's none that can deliver out of my hands. Yeah. That's it. You got Yeah. That's a great one. What's the other one, too? He's got another good one. Made a herb a service to... Yeah. I am the Lord God. There's no Lord God besides me. For I kill and I make to live. I strike and I heal. And there's none that can deliver out of my hands, say the Lord God. That's Deuteronomy, right? You're right, you're right. 32, 39, I think you got it, yeah. There's another one I'm thinking of, too. Uh, uh, something uh, something about the Lord killing to make alive. It's, it's two kings, it's, it's a short one. But, the biggest thing here is, you know, when people start condemning stuff that God made and promotes, watch out, okay? Be careful. Uh, go to a doctor for things that can be cured, and I'm not, you know, I say this a million times. Doctors, to me, is one of the highest professions in the world and very admirable. And they deserve to get the highest pay of anybody in the world because doctors, it's a very, if you're a good doctor, and it is a very good, but today, nowadays, in the world we're living in today, the whole medical profession is getting corrupted. It is corrupted. Not everybody. But they got you taking pills you don't need to take. They're giving you exams you don't need. But, but for the good things they do, they still do good things, but they do a lot of bad things. So it's dangerous. You go there, and you don't know if he's misdiagnosing you because he wants to make money. He's giving you pills because the pharmaceutical companies want to make money. We're living in a dangerous, crazy time. And I've never seen more self-help people than you have today. When it comes to your health or to making money, who's that one girl that she comes on there all the time helping people make money? She's real famous. I'm going to help you make money. Yeah, I'm gonna help you get rich, huh? All these podcasts, not all. Ormond, I forget him. Good. Yeah, huh? All of them, a lot of them. Uh, Alex Jones, uh, Charlie Kirk. Uh, oh, yeah, they got yeah, yeah, all yeah. Things, you know, that's it. Yeah. You got it. And, and oh, Alex is. I know, yeah. He's bad. He doesn't stop no, with the doesn't. pills. Yeah, he does. And they all got it. I know. It is that was it was somebody with that. But if they come up and they're telling you, oh, you got to take my pills, the gyro energy. Yeah. You take, you know. And it's, yeah. if you if you have a problem and you you can you can fool me once yeah. it's true, but not twice. Well, you can fool me twice. So you think maybe it works? You buy it, and sometimes we all try that. You try something, I go, get too shit, you know. Yeah. Oh, I got worse. I went, this may be worse. Yeah. Get back, get out of here, yeah. you know. And they send the bottle back if you don't like it. Most people they don't do that. Yeah. So it, it, they got you, yeah. and then you learn, you know. And then when you start all these. Fantastic claims. Yeah. Uh, Gorka's got the thing. He's on air about oh, the yeah. Yeah. this pain thing and, and Huckabee. Oh, yeah. He's got his thing yeah. too. Oh, this is me and my wife. We haven't slept good for 10 years. Yeah. Now we took this pill and we're sleeping right through the night. Uh, oh, my pillow. <laughs> That's the guy. Oh, he's yeah. back. No, I'm sick of him. This yeah. is simple capitalism. Yeah. He don't stop. No, he doesn't. He says, my pillows yeah. are the best pillows in the world. You get my pillow and you're going to sleep through the whole night. Because of a pillow? Yeah. What happens if I got like a, a liver that's, or, or I got my arm cut off, I broke my arm, I got no painkillers? What happens if I got a flu and I'm coughing my head off? Your pillow's going to make me stop coughing? Your pillow's going to heal my wounds? Take my pillow and you'll guarantee you sleep through the night. And uh, they're the best pillows you can ever, it's a pillow. I got one of his pillows. Yeah, hey, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the same as any other pillow. I mean, yeah. you can, I mean, Ah, and you listen to it, they go, on. No. He's got these medical claims about that. Exactly. And I'm going, ah, oh, it's, it's sickening. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell it's sickening. And he doesn't stop. No, no. Then he goes on, he goes, and I tell you, if you order it now because you're on the Charlie Kirk show, yeah, I'm going to yeah. give you two of my pillows, for one for free if you yeah. buy two. Yeah. And then you can get one of my special silk things, and I'll buy you one for free for two for five. And, and it'll go on. And I go, what is this guy? Yeah. He's a bum. I, I'm, it's that's sinful capitalism. That's sinful capitalism. Even Sister Nicoline, when she was watching our uh, college playoff game in the United States, now they're in Ireland, and she says, "I've never seen so many commercials in my life, let alone how long they are, let alone how gross they are." So the United States is the epitome. She's the harlot. They got them over there, but nothing. I'm glad they got to watch it. It's, it's torture. I said, you know what? And the, and the kind of commercials. Immoral, crazy, insane. You, you're going to go nuts watching that stuff if you believe it. And I said, hell is like, that's, there's a part in hell where that's all you do. 
That's part of your hell. You just look at these commercials over and over again. <laughs> my pillow guy. <laughs> a thousand years you watch them. Hi, this is Mike Lindell with a my he might even be down or doing his commercial. Yeah. Go ahead. I've been watching a lot of sports the last you know, few months, a lot of football and stuff. In previous years, I, I hadn't, well, we didn't watch that much. I'm sitting there sometimes and I'm watching the commercial, and I forget that I'm actually watching a football yeah. game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, was I, what, 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 what am I watching? <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna know how the Jew lies? I don't know. First of all, you shouldn't have commercials, period. Done! I might have guessed advertising stuff that people may want, so here's what I would do in a Catholic society. Here's, here's, there's two stations for commercials. If you want to buy something, turn that on and don't going to tell you what you want. No commercials. You can have a, you can have a break, like we used to have in the movies. We're going to take like a 10 minute break so you can get something to eat. Intermission. No commercials. None. Get rid of your commercials altogether. And wait, what's going to the other thing? Um, Get rid of commercials altogether. You have that separate st station with your commercials. And there's something else I was just thinking of about the commercials. But uh, uh, and of course they have to be good commercials. You know. Right. So yeah. you go That's over. Not even fair with the commercials nowadays. Anyway, oh, all the oh. Hours. But back to the Jew thing. So now we know. First of all, it's an interruption to whatever you're watching. It interrupts the sports players too. Yeah, yeah. So when they first think about the. Go back. People have a short memory. I'm going to maybe make it a le less shorter. You go back when it started, right? One minute. That was all they were allowed. Yeah. Uh, we promised to only give one-minute commercials. Then all of a sudden, maybe a year or two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Now we're up to like five minutes. And they would even limit. Like, we're going to give a one-minute commercial. Go back and watch early TV. One-minute commercial, three commercials during the show. Mm -hmm. Now they're five-minute commercials, five co or eight commercials during the thing. It just keeps getting more and more and more. Now, it gets deeper even. So people are really angry on TV now because they're watching all these commercials. Well, go to cable and you'll get rid of commercials because you're going to pay for cable. And because you pay for cable TV, no commercials. That was the big thing on cable. So people go to cable, they're paying monthly fees to get rid of commercials. That only lasted about three years or four years. Then all of a sudden, commercials started creeping in on cable. Now we got commercials all over cable. And not, now you've got the commercials all over cable, and then you're told you're paying for the cable, but now there's certain shows you can't watch on cable unless you've got to pay for them. And you're already paying your monthly fee. Sinful capitalism is worse than communism. It's worse. Communism, you're in a lowly condition. You know what you are. You're more humble. You're gonna, it's not good neither, but simple capitalism is the most evil thing in the whole world. Yeah. Greed, selfishness. When you're on YouTube, they... they now! They shoot these commercials. Yes. Augustine was talking about that. Is he still online? Yeah. Another one, another yeah. One. yeah. And then they increase them. If you oh, yeah. It'll be five seconds. Yeah. Now it's yeah. 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. And that, now we're going to get deep. Now we're going to get and talk uh, how they use commercials to pervert people with immorality, faithlessness, and insanity, and goof, just general buffoonery and goofiness. Always something sexual. You're talking about the YouTube thing too. Now, the, now they started adding commercials on YouTube like crazy. And always, if you notice on the right hand side, when they give you sometimes the choices stuff is good, but go to the top one. Yeah. It's a woman with her breasts, yeah. not completely naked, but she's shown her breasts. Yeah. And the devil knows he, he just wants the, the kid to look at that breast. Always in the upper right-hand corner. Look at that breast, and, he, and then you're, and the kid blues his eyes. Uh, if you're Catholic like us, and you pray, God protects you. You turn away immediately. I go, St. Benedict, pray for me. That's what I say. I say, St. Benedict, pray for me. I go like that. Good St. Anne and St. Benedict, pray for me. And then I close the thing and move it around a little bit. Right. But what is he trying to do? He's trying to pervert you. Yeah. That's the Jew. Yeah. Working for the devil who controls the media. That's the Freemason. Those are the slobs. Yeah. They're sexual slobs. And there, there is the Borgia pillow. No, that can solve a lot of problems. What's that? The, the Borgia pillow. Borgia pillow. Smother the guy. Oh, 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 I like that. Hey, hey, Nick, that's a good one. Ah, that's a good one. Nick said there's the Borgia pillow. That's the one where you can smother him with the pillow. Remember he smothered that Muslim kid? Well, you get a good ride's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> sleep is dead. Yeah. You're going to cure me. I, I just get this pillow? Wow! You, he's going to put the doctors out of business. All men are liars. All men are greedy. 
All men are selfish. <laughs> oh, he thinks God gave him that money so he can do what he's doing. Yeah. He's a Zionist. Yeah. He's full of crap. I I, I, Rule and I were talking about this. Uh, we've had it with these people. <laughs> I think we're going to vote for Karaswamy in, in, yeah. in the primary. Yeah. Not even DeSantis. He's a hardcore Zionist. Yeah. He really messed up the other. I, I, I've had it. And then maybe when the general election comes, we might vote for Trump. I'll have to see what happens then. But all these other people, I'm sick of I'm sick of it. No, Let the Chinese well, I come could in. I could be wrong, but I think, I don't know. I could be wrong. I think Trump's going to be the candidate in, in, the, in the general. Well, he is. Uh, uh, no, oh, oh, yeah, he, he would be elected, but I'm going to do Coruscant anyway. But if Trump votes for the red, then I'll vote for him. If, if, if he wins, yeah. then I may vote for him yeah. because they hate him. There's something going on with Trump that's yeah. kind of weird. Uh, you, he wouldn't be getting this much heat unless there's something he's going to do that's good. It, although I still don't, not 100% with him neither. But all, all these, all, I'm sick of it. You know, I was thinking today, there's a couple words I'd like to learn in Chinese. <laughs> Welcome and what took you so long? <laughs> I'm resigned to it. Yeah, yeah. I told Will, I'd rather have the Democrat get in. Yeah, yeah. I really rather. Yeah. Let's let's expedite this thing. <laughs> let's speed it up a little bit and torture the Patriot people. <laughs> right? Let's torture them. They're yeah. fanatical. Yeah, they are. I, I've told well, I think these righties will kill us quicker than the lefties. Yeah, they know. That are fanatical, yeah. Christian Zionists, yeah. selfish, greedy, yeah. and they have their own problems of sinful capitalism. You know, right. uh, they're not merciful to poor people that are really poor and need help. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against giving people uh, money you don't need. I, I don't. I don't want people to work. But right. they, the, the righties are, yeah. are more dangerous than the lefties yeah. in many ways. And we were talking about how. There's got to be a meeting in the middle between these two groups if you want to come to us. But it was like the, the right they hate how they hate China so much, you know. But China, yeah, exactly. But they, they China, Russia, but they hate China. I, we were talking about this the other day. Like what? China, they don't like Russia. So they, <laughs> China, they like Hitler, Mein Kampf, and they yeah. copied his system. Right. Think they say China is communistic, and they like to use the word communistic. But it's not like Marxist communism, which was controlled by apostate Jews, and they oppressed the Russian people. They treated co sinful Marxist communism, hates the people. Right. China doesn't hate their own people. It's well, good. Like Trump would admit that, like he, he's go, looking out for his own people. Like he's pal like that deal with Xi Jinping. Yeah, they're looking at like Nick Ferrante says that too. That they're looking out for their own people. Uh, and look Xi at Jinping. Your, look of at, course, go, they're gonna get go to the Chinese to, station, to the, CCGT, people. and look at it. Turn it on. Yeah. They're way ahead of us. Oh, yeah. Way more better than we are. Yeah. They, they On farming, ranching, social things, order in society, and they are doing what Hitler did. Right. It's, they don't call it, the, but they love Hitler. Yeah. They yeah. copy in his mind. Kampf. They're kind of, it's, it's, right. they say communism, but it's not the Marxist communism. Yeah. They care for their people. They have capitalism, but it's not sinful. Right. If anybody gets out of hand in China, a capitalist who starts hurting China, yeah. they'll put them in jail. They lock them up. Yeah. You're doing drugs. They lock them up. Yeah. You, they, 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 they got regulations. Mm -hmm. They got rules. They care for their people. They still have capitalism, and they're actually proving what Hitler did is what they're doing in China today. Yeah. They're actually doing what Hitler did in Germany today in China. And you go look at that station. Look at they, their cities are all electric cars, solar panels. They're so far ahead of us. Yeah. Even the guy. What's his, yeah, he, Mearsheimer said, yeah, right. they're normal. He goes, you go up, they're normal people. He says, the West is full of insanity. Yeah, Even right. Russia's normal. Yeah, you go right. to Russia, you go to China. The politics is normal. It's yeah. way, It's another world you're living in. Yeah, nuclear power, too. Yeah. yeah. Now, even though the devil's going to use him and the Antichrist to conquer Europe, they're never going to get China to go along with the whole plan. China is using the Antichrist to come to power. Yeah. And the Antichrist even knows it, but he needs him. Because right, right. he needs a power like to take over Europe, so it's a love-hate relationship. Right. And he knows he's not ultimately going to get China. Because no. they're not going to flip over to him. Well, the other thing, too, is like like China says, and I agree, like when they go to these countries, I think if they're in Africa and they're coming, they help, they work with the people in the United States go to no country. They soak them. Yeah, they soak they, them. And the ones, they, they soak them. They strip minerals. out the resources. Yeah, and they, they steal from them. the people. Exactly. They treat the people like goy cattle. Yeah. Jews and Freemasons, goy cattle. When the Chinese come in, they they build up the country. You got to work. Exactly. So the guy that's not going to like the Chinese is a lazy bastard. Is a lazy, rebellious, drug addict, radical, criminal, gangster exactly. bastard. They're not going to like the Chinese. I, now I did. We spoke about this many times before. Do we? You're like, but whenever sinful capitalism, democracy comes in, drugs and crime goes rampant. Even when, but not when communism comes in. Even the Marxist communism, which I don't like. Right. That's that's bad. Because the Marxist communism, Jews were running Russia and they hated the Russians. Yeah. They treat them like animals. Yeah, 
You're going cattle. That's not the communism in China. It's completely different. You look at the communism in China, that's what Hitler did in Germany, basically. The state has the power to regulate if capitalism gets out of hand. You can now have private property over there. You can have your businesses. But if you get out of hand and you start threatening the common good of China, they're going to step in. You can't overstep your brother in business. That's right. You can't overstep your brother in business. You can't steal. You can't be a drug addict. People complain. They go, oh, if China comes in, we're going to be on like the... They have a system. Social you get credit. a social credit system. That's right. That's a good which, which if you just spit in public, they're going to give you a demerit. That's good. Yeah. If you litter, they're going to give you like a demerit. That's good. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not if if you if you uh, doing drugs or something, you get a lot of demerits and you go to jail. Yeah. That's good. It's not bad. You, you see the order of their uh, cities and, and and they're watching how. So what? People don't want to be regulated anymore. That's why this country everybody's running around doing whatever they want. American. No one's. There's no punishments. There's no proper punishments. There's no real. Uh, consequence going. Freedom, they always talk about in America is do whatever I want. That's, yeah. That's all it's about. Yeah. Do what I will. In China, even though we couldn't do this if it was a Catholic country, you're smart. They're using this fentanyl thing to poison the West. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that because that's something you, you won't want anybody. But they, God's allowing it. And they, but in their own country, no drugs. Yeah. My father was living in Hungary when Hitler came in, and, and Hungary was fighting on the side of Hitler in Germany. He says Hitler got rid of all the crime, all the drugs. All the corrupt politicians, abortions, uh, banned all interest rates. Overnight, he turned Hungary around overnight. There was no more drugs, no more drug uh, addictions. Turned it around overnight with a strong hand. Duterte was doing that in the Philippines, and the poop in Rome is yelling at him. What are you yelling at him for? He's locking up the ma major drug dealers, and all those that were addicted, he put them into a rehab. He cared about them. He tried them out. He was killing the major. You're yelling at this guy for killing the major drug dealers? That's why we say the biggest drug dealers in the United States is our own government, our own CIA, our own FBI, our own president, our own senators, our own congressmen are all in the pocket. They're getting a lot of money from the drug business. They're not stopping it. They could stop it overnight if they want, like Hitler did. I knew that as a kid when I was living in Newark, New Jersey. I used to say, wait a second, I see these kids selling heroin. And uh, cocaine on the street corner. I know who they are. Yeah. I, I don't have all the stuff the government has. They got all these scanners, these beamers, these spy equipment. They got all this stuff, and they don't know where they are. Yeah. No one's calling you up and hey, look, this the guy in the corner. Hey, there he is. Yeah. They know. The dr biggest drug kingpins are your own government. Yeah. They're allowing it, and they play lip service against it. Oh, we're, we're going to stop the drug. You ain't going to stop nothing. You're making all the money off of that. You can stop it overnight. They get the money in the back pocket. And it's not just money in the back pocket. These Freemasons and Jews want to destroy the United States from within. And you do it by drug addiction. So there's, a, there's so much stuff going on. But uh, that's why I'm glad our, uh, that uh, Francis Luna printed an article on Hitler socialism versus Marxian, Marx, Marxist communism. Which had a lot of stuff in there. So, now we end up getting a big lecture anyway. So. <laughs> Any questions from anybody? Anyway? If I don't stop, we'll be here until uh, next week. <laughs> well, you got, what is it, once a week you get a good lecture? You know what makes me sad? What, we, what I just said here, the work, the Catholic faith, the true Catholic faith and the perspective is life and life. Yeah. It's steak and lobster. Yeah. It's chocolate cake. It's Belgian chocolate from Belgium. <laughs> it's, it's the best beer. It's the best wine I just gave you. And they want to eat crap. Yeah. But the, people do listen. So we, I mean, we're here for the 10 people that listen out of, out of a thousand. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. And we're very happy even, you know, when one comes in. But even if one doesn't come in, what, what, what can you do? What is sad when you're looking at how evil people are. They're all liars. 99.9% .9 of people are liars. They're evil. And, and, and the proof is before our very eyes. There's something really rotten in people when they can lie the way they lie, and then you're going to blame it on God. Wait, I just asked you, you something. You lied, not God. You lied. You saw the 9-11 evidence, and you still say that, the, that it wasn't demoed. You saw it. God didn't tell you that. You said it. You're a bastard. That's why there's a hell. You lied. Take the responsibility for your own sins. Mankind is steeped in sin. Natural law, you can see this when you just look at the way people are today. All the lies were uncovered and with the Renaissance era and 
deep, sneaky lies about denying the Catholic faith. That's it. The stuff that I've been doing is as deep as it gets. It doesn't get any deeper than that. You're looking at false letters from popes that they never wrote those letters, quoting church fathers that never said what they said, taking church fathers out of context because they never meant what you said they said. I mean, the hardest work has already been done. And we still got more evidence that's coming out, but we got most of it out there. So when the Antichrist comes to power, it's like a walk in the park. It is. The hardest work and I told it was was me getting all the stuff out there. And the sad part, though, and it still is sad, and we're talking about this today, we got, oh, uh, Brother Mateos posted some great quotes from St. Hillary of Port Terry. you got to read it. Yeah. Condemning uh, philosophy and uh, idols. Yeah, I mean, it's, what, what, what and I got other, I mean, it, it, I probably, I didn't read that one, but I'm going to add it to my book. Okay. All right. You know, we were saying before, uh, Honorius. He was condemned in four or five ecumenical councils. That means ecumenical councils that even the East accepts, real popes, we condemn and, and denounce Honorius as a heretic. Another, and two more popes, six, all together, popes can, real popes. And now these modern popes, he was a saint. He's okay. He wasn't a heretic. You're a pope and you say he's okay. He's a pope and he infallibly in ecumenical said he's not okay. You just undermine papal infallibility. Why should I listen to any pope anymore? Think about that. Think about it deeply. So the modern guy comes along and goes, oh, I don't care what these five real popes said in ecumenical councils. And that's an infallible decree. And they're saying he was a heretic. This new pope said he's not a heretic. Okay, so what happens if like five years later we get another pope and he says he was a heretic? This is a seesaw battle. Where's infallibility? Either he is or he isn't. They, angel from heaven that's God right. God and they do this with dogmas. They think they're upholding the papacy and they're actually denying it because they're pr protecting these Renaissance anti popes. Think about the trick of the devil. If he can get you to have papal idolatry, you're going to, whatever the Pope yeah. says, they're idolizing this guy. Pope Francis, Pope Francis. He just said you can bless married couples. Pope Francis, Pope Francis. He's the Pope. He, he can never are. He's all right, Pope Francis. But this has been going on for a long time. And as I prove in my book, we never idolized popes in the first thousand years of the church. Real popes were, there were some real popes that were bad popes, and some that were anti-popes. And they were taken to task. They were condemned. They were deposed. They were removed from the diptychs. Mm -hmm. the but, the, I mean, think about this. It, it's like 9-11. You saw the evidence? You look at the five ecumenical councils on Norris, and Origin too. He was condemned in four or five ecumenical councils. Origin. Leo XIII says he's the great origin, one of the greatest guys we ever had. Well, Leo, you're the Pope, and these five Popes go against you. Pope against Pope. You both can't be right. There's the end of paper power. And this is an ecumenical councils. And he can come along and do, But they do it with dogmas, too. But it's, it do, it's dogmatic when a Pope condemns somebody as a heretic, infallibly. That's how you know. That's the final statement. When, when, and they do it with prominent people that are swaying people. So, so I told you, if I don't stop, <laughs> we're going to be here for like, what time is it anyway? Oh, okay. Well, anyway. All right. Anyway. These sermons just keep coming out. <laughs> Our Catholic faith is so great. That's all I can say. God is so great. He's so good. He's so great. He's so holy. He's so true. And when you have the truth, it is. And I think of why the Blessed Mother suffered so much. She, she didn't have any concupiscence, nothing. Now, imagine her living in this world. You see what we're going through? Imagine what she went through. No concupiscence. She sees the pure love of God in her heart. Her own son, Jesus Christ, son of God, God himself. And she had to witness all of this. Anyway. Don't kid yourself. She's going to wait till she comes down. I think God's going to let her, do, you know, the final kibosh. These other people, they say with these false apparitions, Mary's going to take care of it all. She already did, okay? You want her to come back down from heaven and, take, and, and live on this earth in this wicked world? She suffered more than anybody for our uh, redemption at the foot of the cross. You want her to come back again? Look, leave it in Mary's hand. Don't judge anybody. Mary's going to take care of it all for you. Look, this goes back years. So what has she done lately as far as like on earth? You know, you want, first of all, that's pretty nasty. You want her to come back on earth? What? We're living in a crazy world. All these false apparitions from these mystics. That's scary stuff. I mean, the Bridget of Sweden, the oh, stuff yeah. she was saying. Oh, yeah. Satan, it's ugly. Oh, it's ugly. Yeah. Ugly. Yeah. It All right, I got it. I'm stopping it right here, okay? <laughs> Name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen. Okay, stop that, and then we'll go into the... Uh,